All right. How is everybody? Good. You know, um, we always want to give credit to God, but I want to give a special thanks to the Sunday school classes. I want to give a special thanks to Debbie Shaughnessy, who kind of made all the Advent service happen. If we can just give them a round of applause. I thought that was great. A really meaningful get us kicking off the season um, together. So uh, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and open up uh, to the book of Luke chapter 21. That's where we'll be spending our time today. Um, and some of you know this, but uh, I, was, I was on vacation a uh, week before last. And uh, it was great. I actually, uh, I built a porch on my house. Um, kind of looks like I built a, um, a house on my porch because my, um, anyway, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so uh, I enjoyed it. It was great. It was a lot of recoup time. Apparently, you're supposed to put the uh, studs every, or the joists every uh, uh, 16 inches on center, and I didn't know that, and so it's kind of like a diving board, but I'm not a carpenter. So I got to go back and do some work. But I enjoyed my time off. Thank you. Uh, I encourage you to do the same. Take time away to recoup. Uh, one of the things I enjoy doing when I have time off, when I have time just to relax, is I like to wake up with a good cup of coffee. Amen? Italian sweet creamer, you know what I'm talking about? I gotta have the sugar-free kind, but it's good. And I love to get my cup of coffee, and I love to get Mika and our daughter and sit her in the recliner beside me, and I like to watch the Today Show. Okay, it's just kind of, kind of my routine when I have time on my hands, and I um, always enjoy that time, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, the week that I was on vacation, it was a little disturbing to sit and watch the Today Show. Uh, I, I, was, I was thinking about all the things that uh, were reflected on during the course of the week. We had uh, the attacks uh, that happened uh, in, in Paris, uh, had 130 people killed, almost 400 additional people injured. Uh, the graphic images, if you remember, some of you may have seen the woman that was hanging off the ledge who was pregnant, um, and they were talking about who's going to be next. Is it going to be Britain? Is it going to be uh, the U.S.? Um, and then, then it, it transitioned from that, and it went into the whole Syrian refugee uh, issue. Um, somewhere between 9 and 12 million uh, Syrians uh, have had to leave their homeland over the course of the past, I think, since 2011. Uh, and, and once again, those images of people being slaughtered and murdered uh, in the midst of civil war and people trying to get on buses um, and people trying all these life rafts. And, and my daughter was sitting there and I'm actually thinking, I don't even want Meekin to watch the news. Um, I don't even want her to see what's going on. Then, then to top it all off, um, we had the upstate pastor um, whose wife uh, was, was pregnant and she was, she was murdered. Um, and, 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 and then... Then we had Charlie Sheen. We had Charlie Sheen, who was diagnosed with HIV. And, and the interesting thing um, is that the media was focusing on whether or not he told these ladies um, that he had the disease, and nobody focused on the fact that they actually had to interview uh, multiple women. Um, and it was very disheartening to me. And, and by about Wednesday, um, I was kind of ready just to cut the news off and to take my coffee and go out on my half-built porch that I was about to fall through and just watch the cows. <laughs> um, be because it, it's, it's a bit overwhelming. In fact, it seems to me that there's this undercurrent of our world that's just getting to be chaotic. This just, just undercurrent of persecution and famine and... and, and um, and anyway, in, in, our, in our scripture today, uh, it's, it's going to really emphasize two things. Number one, it ain't going to be like this forever. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ is coming back. And Jesus Christ is going to come back, and he's not just going to return, but he's going to bring order to the chaos. Uh, I, he's going to do what we call some house cleaning. And Jesus doesn't have a rug that he sweeps it underneath. He doesn't have a closet that he puts all the problems in, but Jesus actually cleans the whole house. Um, and he's going to come back, and, and he's going to reign. In fact, the season of Advent, if you notice, if you go over in the traditional service, you'll see the liturgical colors are purple. You'll notice some uh, purple candles up here, and the, the purple uh, represents royalty and majesty. Um, and, and, and we focus on not just the fact that the baby is coming into the world, the Christ child, uh, God incarnate, but we're also focusing on the fact that that child who will grow up and who will die, he'll be resurrected. And when he's resurrected, he says, I'm not going to leave you. I'm actually going to come and, and I'm going to come back to you. John chapter 14, if you haven't read it, you need to read it. He says, in my father's house are many rooms. 
And he says, and if I, go, if I go to this place and prepare it, I'm going to bring you to be with me where I am. And I was just thinking about purple this week. I was thinking, you know what we should do about ISIS and ISIL and, and all these terrorist groups? I think all the Christians should start wearing purple. Did every Christian start wearing purple? And they'd be like, what's all the purple about? And maybe they'd start catching on. There's a God who we serve, Jesus Christ, who loves people unconditionally, who allows us to stand in the face of persecution without fear, with confidence and courageousness. And his name's Jesus Christ. See, the text is going to be about him coming back, but it's also, it's also going to be about the fact not only is Jesus going to return, but, but before, before it gets better, before he comes back, it's actually going to get worse. It's actually the, these, all the tribulation, the persecution that we're dealing with, they could be signs. They could be what we call birthing pains. Ladies, um, I just want to tell you, I, I haven't been through it, but I, I've witnessed it. Um, I know that some of the worst pain that you've ever been through in your life, if you've had a child, some of the worst pain that you've ever been through came before the greatest joy that you ever experienced. Am I right? I mean, you just hurt, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's the greatest joy. And the Bible tells us that there's going to be this, this, this time of, of, of persecution and pain right before Jesus Christ comes back. I want us to look at Luke chapter 21. This is, uh, Jesus is speaking what we call apocalyptic language. Jesus is, uh, he's, he's actually uh, near the temple. He's at the Mount of Olives and he's with the disciples. And the disciples are talking about the temple and how beautiful it is. And Jesus says, I want to tell you something, guys. The temple is going to be destroyed. Uh, he's speaking in this apocalyptic language, and we know that the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, so that comes true. But then Jesus also begins to speak about the end times, um, what's going to happen when uh, he returns. And I don't know that the disciples really get it, uh, but we want to just kind of look at these words and, 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 and see, see, see what they mean. Let's begin with verse 25. It says, There'll be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what's coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Now, there's two ways we could begin to interpret these verses. One, we could talk about them literally. Two, we could talk about them metaphorically. Literally, I believe that there's going to be cosmic chaos when Jesus returns. Uh, I live in the country. Y'all know what the country is? I mean, I live out. It's pretty cool. It's kind of it's kind of getting to be urbanized. But but I I, I, I went out on um, the other night and and um I could just see the stars. It's a cool thing about the country. If you live in the city, you can't see the stars. And I was studying this scripture and I went out and it was a full moon this week. Meekin's like moon, but it was a full moon. You could see the stars. And I thought to myself, God placed those in the universe. God has the ability to move those. And God could take the moon and he could move it. And if you notice the scripture today, it says that there'll be roaring and tossing of the sea. What affects the tide in the ocean? It's the moon, right? And, and so when, when God one day begins to move these things around, it's going to affect the tides in the oceans is a way that we could interpret this literally that there's actually going to be this just chaos in our universe when Jesus Christ comes back and... It, and, 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 uh, and what, what, what are we going to do? Will we be ready for his return? See, the other way that we could interpret it is metaphorically. We could think about that our world is shaking right now. I imagine the Syrians feel like there is cosmic chaos in their life right now. Do you feel like in your life, at this point in time, that you're being tossed between the waves of the sea? Maybe you're here today and you feel like that. You feel like your entire universe is being shaken. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Maybe you're going through financial problems. Maybe you've lost your home. Maybe it's your job, some kind of relationships, and you just feel like my life is being shaken. Either way, here's what Jesus says. Verse 26, he says, People will faint from terror, apprehensive of, of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. You feel apprehensive right now? You feel a sense of nervousness in your life? I, I, I got to fly to Washington, D.C. week after next. Got to admit, I'm not really excited about it. 
Um, the pretzels and the ginger ale just aren't going to do it for me. Uh, there's this whole national allure, and this is travel warning. And, and I mean, I'm kind of fearful for my life. I'm kind of walking around in this state of just fear. Um, I feel like a lot of us are right now because there's so much cosmic chaos happening. Do any of you go shopping on Black Friday? You're nuts. We went into Walmart the night before. Uh, we just stopped to get some milk. Bad idea. They had everything wrapped in plastic on pallets. And there was this big crowd of people standing around them. And Jenny and I went over to look, see, what, what, what is it all about? They were getting $7 DVDs. Woohoo! And I told Jenny, though, there were so many people there. And there was this tension. These people were literally about to fight over these DVDs. I said, man, I just got to get out of here. She's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just nervous. I mean, it's like all the stuff in the media is just, just there's just undercurrent. And, and Jesus says, though, he says, it, it'll be like that. People will faint from terror. Now, whether we're in those times, I think we're close to those times. Obviously, we're closer than we've ever been to the return of Jesus. But listen, now, here's the good news. It says, at that time, they will see the Son of Man. I want you to pay attention to this. They'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up. Lift up your heads because redemption is drawing near. Man, I'm excited about that. It says that Jesus is going to come in a cloud. We're all going to see him. And he's going to appear. And when it does, it says those who believe in him should stand up and lift up your head. Why? Because we have the confidence of the Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, this morning, I want you to do something for me. I want you to stand up. We've got to practice. This is what we're going to do when Jesus returns. You see, what happens with people who don't know Jesus, they put their head down and they, they have guilt and they have shame and they don't know if they can stand in confidence. But those of us who know Jesus Christ can stand up and the Bible tells us, it says, man, when he comes, you're going to see him in a cloud and I want you just to stand up and lift up your heads. While you're standing, I want to read something to you. It comes from the book of Revelation chapter 19. Now listen, this is, this is, this is what it's going to look like. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse. It says, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He's dressed in a robe. He's dipped in blood. And his name is the Word of God. And it says, the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. That's what we're going to stand to. Jesus Christ in a robe, dipped in blood, riding on a horse, coming in the clouds. You can be seated. You see, you may be here today and you say, man, I don't know if I can stand in confidence. The reason that you can stand in confidence is because you know Jesus Christ and you know his name. See, Jesus gives a parable in today's text in verse 29. And Jesus is always good about this. He just makes something really complicated. He uses a really simple analogy. And it says he told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. Now we know this in springtime. They're on the Mount of Olives and, and they can see the fig trees. It says, when they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. So he says that if you're going through a winter in your life right now, guess what's on the other side? Spring. Winter ain't going to last forever. Have you fallen into the trap of thinking that you're stuck in winter? You just feel like all the leaves and all the goodness and everything has just fallen off of you. Jesus says... Spring's coming. There's a Savior coming. I'm returning. I'm coming back. The tree's not going to be bare forever. The marriage, the divorce, the financial problems, it ain't going to be like this forever. In fact, if Jesus comes back, guess what? You just took your last pain pill. If Jesus comes back, you ain't got to pay off the mortgage. Some of you are going to start praying for that, aren't you? See, all the worry and the stress and the anxiousness and the anxiety, when he comes back, it's done. 
It says in verse 32, he says, Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Now obviously the generation of disciples he was speaking to uh, are all gone, but some commentators say that generation refers to the Jewish people, the chosen people, God's people. In other words, God's people will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. We'll all witness it. In verse 33, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Your marriage fails. Your bank account fails. Your children go wild. You lose your house. Your church burns down. Whatever. God's word stays. That's why we got to keep our noses in it. That's why we got to study it. Jesus says, my word's true. My word will be here long after everything else. It'll exist, in, it'll exist into, into eternity. You see, folks, here's the deal. Our concentration has to be on the expectation. That's where your mind's got to be. Your concentration's got to be on the expectation that Jesus is coming back. Now, I, I, love, I love how he ends it because he, he, he nails it. Of course, it's Jesus, he would. It says in verse 34, Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing. And that just means basically getting drunk and partying. None of y'all went to the Clemson game yesterday and did that, did you? Just making sure. I'm not it. He says, your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. It will come on all those who live on the face of the earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Now, how do you deal with your problems? I just ask, how do you deal with them? Everybody's got a way they deal. Might be alcohol. Jesus names that one. He's like, you got problems in your life, you just go drink. It might be partying. It might be in relationships where you try to fulfill your life and finding that right person that's going to bring utter completeness. Um, it might be in the things you buy. Biggest house, biggest car, wins. But the only place that's truly going to satisfy your life is in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And knowing him and loving him and be able to hand over all this junk and stress and weight that you have and placing it on his shoulders. Because he's big enough to carry it. And, and see, Jesus says the day will come like a trap. I used to have mice in my last parsonage. So I'll just be honest. Um, and uh, the thing, the reason that a trap catches a mouse is because it's fast. It doesn't come slow. Mouse isn't like, hmm, here comes the trap. Got to get out. Jesus says that day will come like a trap. Um, it'll come on us like a thief in the night is where he says in other parts of Scripture. Um, and it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. It will come on the persecutors and the terrorists and the, the, those that are evil and, and all people. And he says, be on the watch. Pray. And pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. Some of us are just putting band-aids on the problems. Think about a band-aid that falls off. What you've got to get to is the source of the healing, which is Jesus. Just hand it over to him. And one thing I know about people in church, they bring problems to church because we're all human. We all have something we need to lay down. We all have something in our life that's causing cosmic chaos. And that's tossing us back and forth. What is it for you? What is it today that you need to lay down before Jesus Christ. You see, uh, the, the book of John tells us that Jesus is actually given uh, the responsibility of judging each and every one of us. Um, I, I thought this was interesting. This verse really hit me. John chapter 5, verse 21 through 23 says, Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. Jesus is going to be the one that we'll stand before. Jesus will be the one that we'll answer to. Can you stand up? Can you stand up and lift up your head before the face of Jesus? I want to tell you there's a time in my life that I couldn't do that. 
I really didn't feel like if Jesus came back, I could look in his eyes. You know what I did? I started doing as many good works as I could because I want to make sure that I impressed Jesus. Not really. That's a trap. You can't get into heaven by your works. You get into heaven by your faith in Jesus Christ. And see, all you need to do to be able to stand before Jesus with confidence is admit that you're a sinner and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you. It's the only way. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry, but I am royally jacked up. This last song that we're going to sing when the band comes up is going to be our invitation. Um, we invite you to lay down your sins before Jesus Christ or to come and be prayed with, to enter into a relationship with him. It's the season of Advent, folks, but I want to remind you, too many times we focus on the baby. The, the baby's awesome that Jesus came into the world, but you know what happened to the baby? The baby grew up and the baby died, but then there's, there, there's a great, there's a great uh, portion of that story that we just got to really focus on, the fact that he was resurrected. And then when he was resurrected, he said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So I want to invite you. Just close your eyes and pray with me. Just open your heart to Jesus right now and ask, what do I need to confess in my life to get rid of the distance between me and God? What is it that I'm afraid of, that I'm anxious about? Why am I fearful? You're fearful of losing your home or losing your marriage, losing your job. You're fearful for your children, dropping them off at school in the midst of all the things that are happening in the media. Are you fearful of getting on a plane and traveling? You're fearful of going to Walmart, Black Friday. I don't know what your fears are, but I know how to stand up in the midst of it. It's to have Jesus walking with you. Father God, I just pray for hearts to be healed today. People leave this place with the confidence in the Son of God. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for rising. And thank you for your promise to return. Soften hearts today, Lord. Let people feel the need to come to you, to be prayed for, to lay their life down, to ask for the forgiveness of sins. Pray these things in your holy and precious name. Amen.